I'm on a quest for being able to better define impact. And I'm talking about the impact that we have around here that is spelled a bit differently. E-M-P-A-C-T, that form of impact is a different type of impact altogether. It's not as easy to find as the impact that happens when there's a wreck or a break or something along those lines, but this form of impact has greater, well, impact. (laughs) Empowered impact happens when people are vulnerable, when we let down our guard and be honest with ourselves in a way that not just changes us, but changes others in the process. My dear friend and fellow author, Katie Anderson, knows this deeply and believes that real impact happens when we are vulnerable, because that's where true learning happens. I am excited to invite Katie Anderson, author of Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn on today, to share with you just how important important impact really is. Hey, I'm Stephanie Fager and Empower is my middle name. Okay, well not really, but it should be. I believe that empowered people empower people and I'm obsessed with empowering you, the nonfiction author, with impactful marketing strategies to help you take your important message and share it with those who desperately need it and want it and will buy it. I'm the owner and chief strategist of the Empower PR group and the author of three books myself, including my newest book, Make Your Author Impact, Sell More Books, Increase Your Reach and Achieve your why. I've been called to merge my love for reading books, writing books, and marketing books to help nonfiction authors with laser-focused strategies and tactics to write books that sell, promote books to those who need and want them most, and build meaningful businesses from empowering messages. Think of this podcast as your one-stop shop for marketing insights from an author who has been there, done that, and understands exactly where you are. Because guess what? I do. So get your pens ready because I'm ready to empower you today with Katie Anderson. This is the Empowered Author Podcast. Katie, I am so freaking glad you're here. It's been like, I've been talking to you about being a part of the Empowered Author Podcast for a year and a half now, and we've made it happen. So good to see you, Katie. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm thrilled to be here and to be talking about our mutual author impact. It's fun, right? Like we've supported one another in our growing and impact making experience over the last several years. And um, I'm just really grateful for you. I'm grateful for the growth I've had with it. And I'm grateful for you allowing me and the Empire PR group to be a part of your growth too. It's been truly a joy to see you make an impact, not just, you know, in your community, not just in our country, but around the world. <laughs> oh, thank you, Stephanie. And I am so grateful for our partnership. You know, I think, or I know that everything you've done has helped me be more successful in having the impact that I wanted, not just for my book, but uh, for my business and for myself personally as well. So thank you for being my guide. Seriously, when any other author says, Katie, you've been so successful in marketing your book over the last two and a half years, what was your secret? And I said, oh, you have to talk, talk to Stephanie because she was my guide on this process. And this is, this is how we help each other. We bring our own expertise to help enable and empower others to be more impactful and successful as well. So thank you for being that person for me. Oh, you are so welcome. You're so welcome. And, you know, I don't know that we can go too much deeper until we talk about actually just the power of people make helping people make an impact. That's like when you look at how I spell impact with an EM, it's the the reminder that impact is not like, like I say, it's not like throwing a rock through a window and it breaks or like, you know, yeah. the impact of a bad day or anything. It's a, it's this rippled impact, this impactful and empowered impact. And that's what people do. And so I think back now, I know your full story, but those listening don't. And I want to share because there have been many pivotal people in your own journey that has helped you get here. One in particular that I think we really need to highlight. So Katie, take it away. I want to know all about Mr. Yoshino and your whole journey. Yeah. first And first, I want to build on this concept of impact and helping each other. And that really Mm -hmm. is linked directly to this concept of a chain of learning. Mm -hmm. And you almost could consider this, this chain of helping each other grow, develop, have the impact that we want as well. So this chain of learning concept is one that my amazing friend and mentor, 40 year Toyota leader, Isao Yoshino referenced when he talked about his experience at Toyota. And 
now for me, it's what I'm trying to do and create by helping others learn together and grow. Um, and so this chain of learning is so impactful. But Mr. Yoshino, for those of you who don't know, is the subject of my book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn, Lessons from Toyota Leader Isao <laughs> Yoshino on a Lifetime of Continuous Learning. Woo. Yay. And uh, I had the... In- I'm a leadership consultant, coach, and speaker who've had, I've had my own company for almost a decade now, working in hospital systems and other industries to really help create learning cultures of continuous improvement that are people-centered, that's really focused on achieving outcomes through process and through, um, through learning. And I had the incredible fortune to move to Japan with my family in 2015 for two years, and I met Mr. Yoshino who is one of just the most kind and wise people that I know. I was talking to him last night um, at the time of this recording. And I literally thought a once in a lifetime like day going to Toyota City and visiting Toyota with him was going to be seriously just one, one day. And it turned into be one of the most impactful relationships in my own life. life. And then I just was learning so much from him. I started writing a blog. People are really responding to the things that I was learning from and with him and from the questions I was asking him. And that that blog then became, oh, let's do a project, maybe a book together. And now it's this award-winning and best-selling book that's really impacted so many people. I mean, the, the almost 255 star reviews on Amazon, I think, speaks for yeah. the impact of the book. And people really resonating with his personal stories and the stories behind the scenes of what's often known as lean uh, manufacturing or lean production. Um, the genesis of agile and all these concepts that a lot of businesses around the world are trying to use to improve their cultures. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Yoshino was there when Toyota was really kind of creating this learning culture. So uh, it, was a, it was awesome. a great privilege of mine. He is so nice. You've had a chance to meet him and talk with yes. him so many times. And Yes, I just, just love great. him. I love him. One day I'm, I'm putting it out there, Katie, on my bucket list. I want to come with you on a trip to Japan and I want to meet him and I want to experience what it's like to yes. be there. That would be oh awesome. I would love to have you come join me in Japan because those trips are not, you learn so much about business and leadership, but you also just get this enriched cultural experience too. So yes, yes. yes. Make it happen. We will. We will. So I've had the pleasure of reading your book cover to cover many times and helping you with your workbook and all this fun stuff in your business. But something that just sits with me when I think about impact, like the true impact as people that we get the opportunity to do it, Mm. you know, we, as, as humans, we like to share the beautiful parts of ourselves, but real impact I have found comes when we're vulnerable and we acknowledge our growth opportunities. Mm. And I remember through discussions we've had with Mr. Yoshino about how he just couldn't understand why you kept asking him questions about his life. He didn't realize that people would think it would be so interesting Right. But then he also it allowed him to, as you were helping kind of formulate this book, helped him start to see things in his own life as the growth and learning potential too, that could help someone in the future. And absolutely. I mean, I was so appreciative of how vulnerable he was willing to be, but there were some um, experiences that were really hard for him to talk about. Like he would say, oh, I had this big business failure and a big personal failure, but it was at a very surface level. But through our partnership, we were able to get to another level. And something shifted for him, as you said, of seeing and reframing these experiences that maybe felt like a failure in the past to him in a new light. And also how rewarding for him to hear how many people are saying, you sharing these experiences, Mr. Yoshino, of your challenges, your failures, your mistakes, actually is allowing me to improve and get better. It's, it's so relatable because sometimes we, we read business books and you see, uh, or leadership books, and you hear more of the, the success stories. And of course, there are a yeah. lot of success stories and great things that happened right. in his life too. Right. But this is a human experience that, you know, life is full of ups and downs and setbacks. I mean, my yeah. darumas that you see up above me represent this Japanese proverb, fall down seven times, get up eight. And it's, it's about always getting up even yes. if we have challenges and setbacks. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, you know, there's so, the, so since we've worked together for so long, there's a lot of parts in just how I see my own business and my own mm-hmm. work that has been informed from our relationship and what I've learned by working with you. But one of oh. them is like this failing forward, right? Like we're going to make mistakes. It's not when the mistakes happen, it's what you do from them. Mm-hmm. And then this other part of where real learning actually happens and real growth happens, and it's not where we always think it is, it's in the reflection part, right? Like people think 
think reflection happens at the end. Like think of, I think back to my corporate days when people would, you know, um, ask, Hey, Stephanie, like it's the end of the year. Shouldn't we be looking at our goals and what have you? Yeah. 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 And it, reflection was always like, oh, okay, well, I guess we could have done that better, but you really charged me to realize that reflection is the beginning. Like it's not mm. the end, it's the beginning and it is the beginning of the next phase. Talk to us a little bit about that. Cause I just, yeah, it's really a part of who I am now. Oh, well that, <laughs> That's so great. And actually, I it's a reminder to me that this month and I need to be doing some more reflection and carve out that time. Mm-hmm. We often talk about in the world of continuous improvement, the plan, do, check, act, the PDCA yeah. process. And it's it's really the scientific method, you know. Yep. Uh, but we often are just so focused on doing and we feel too busy. And so, you know, we just go like maybe create a short plan and then we're do, 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 do. But we're not sure if we're like doing the right thing. Or are we, if something doesn't work out, what are we learning and adjusting from it? So when we actually Mm -hmm. reframe it to plan, do, study, adjust, or as I like to say, study, adjust, plan, do, S-A-P-D, it reminds us that the learning starts through the reflection and the knowing where we need to go actually starts from that reflection. Uh, So when we can take that time to pause, to slow down, to really think and understand what's going on currently, where do I want to go or need to go? then frame some actions as a hypothesis. How am I going to get there? What am I going to try? And then do it and then reflect and learn and adjust again. We actually speed up our ability to get to the end goal because we're doing it smarter and wiser and faster opposed to just taking all these actions. Um, You know, but we all fall, Mm -hmm. I I fall into this trap too of just like, oh yeah. Oh my God, it's so urgent. I just got to keep doing, but are we doing the right thing? So we're wasting all this energy. Um, so we can slow down and yeah, and and reflect and study a little bit more. We are going to be more effective and impactful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think that that's a good reminder. I just took a note of it. For those who are listening that want to write a book, right? Yeah. Many people go, come to me and they go, "I want to write a book, and I'm going to do all these things." And da 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 da. And I pause and say, "Why are you doing it? What's mm. the goal of it?" Why, yes. How are you going to use it, right? So it's this reflection first concept. So if you study and really analyze who needs your book, why do they need that? How are you going to use it? Then you can start to build your book to work for right. you. Well, right. And also choose what's the right publishing pathway for you. Yes. And, you know, what what are the things that are important to you and how, mm-hmm. how you're going to get there? So absolutely. I mean, this applies to any goal yeah. that we're trying to achieve. Um, it does. And book writing, as you know, is full of lots of setbacks and challenges. So we need to know where we're going and then really get some clarity on what are the things we're going to try to get yeah. there and be willing to experiment and to do, mm-hmm. but to reflect and learn along the way too. Yeah. Well, and you're a great case study for this because you decided to publish your book in the thick of a pandemic, Katie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did not decide to publish my book in the pandemic. The book was in its final it stages ready. of editing right yeah. when the pandemic hit. So my decision point was, do I go forward and publish right. or not? You know, you, you know, back in, you know, March, yeah. April, we had no idea that this would be, we were going to be in, uh, it was going to be multi-years, but I almost felt like a, a pregnant person where I was like, I, this, this, this baby needs to be birthed. You can't yes. keep it in. And also going back to where we started the conversations, these human stories of learning, I mean, they're just so heartwarming in many ways, mm-hmm. but also just go managing through through challenges and failure and how to do that. I just, I decided this book needed to be out there and to be accessible for people when they needed it. Mm -hmm. And people really needed it in the pandemic, but it definitely caused uh, me to have to shift so much. I mean, we had planned on, you know, all these public launches and I had all these in-person book tours set up with Mr. Yoshino coming from Japan to Europe in North America with me and all of that that change. And that was disappointing, you know, from an author's standpoint. Now, of course, you know, the pandemic, you know, was going on, sure. but you were really instrumental um, in helping me think about, okay, so what, what can we do through yeah. this and let's leverage this different opportunity. And, you know, it's interesting in some ways, I think I might have reached a broader audience because we pivoted to everything online and yeah. it made it so much more accessible yeah. to other people to be part of the celebrations and the events as well. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the silver, the silver lining, perhaps there's um, always one, but you know, it's, you know, we all had to pivot and, and to really, you know, deal with a new reality, um, in 2020. And so the same thing with authors as well, but I, I'm yeah. really pleased that we were able to navigate through that 
um, in a way that I feel like was quite successful and had an impact. Mm-hmm. And the book continues to grow. Not yes. the book doesn't grow. The, grow. the book is not growing. The book, the book is not growing. But the impact yeah. continues to grow. I'm, you know, it's been translated to four languages. I'm talking to um, four or five other publishers in different countries about translating the book to other oh, languages gosh. in 2023. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, Katie is a beautiful case study for how when you are passionate about what you're doing, when you write a good book, like a really good book, when all of that comes together and you have a beautiful marketing kind of approach and you're willing to learn along the way, like your beautiful example of what book success can look like. Like your yeah. your book is an international bestseller. It's been translated in oodles of languages. You've traveled the world with it. And and I continue to be so excited and delighted to hear like mm. every month people are still buying books and some people find spikes, mm. like single spikes. And you might have some months that are bigger than others, but reality is, is you've got a beautiful constant pulse. Any kind of yeah. thoughts on that? Or what do you think has made the most impact to help make that happen? So, you know, and I tell other authors this too, because uh, I had some great advice from from, some, from previous um, authors that I really mm-hmm. respect in, in the same space, leadership space that I'm in, is that, you know, writing and publishing the book is one thing, but marketing it and getting it the hands of other people, that's all another full-time job. If yeah. you really want to have an impact with your book, you have to put in the effort. So you can have a guide yeah. like Stephanie yeah. um, in the in the Powered PR group. Yeah. You can have that help. What you need to help create the plans and the ideas that you might not know, but you have to execute. And I don't know how many I've been on hundreds of <laughs> yes. webinars and podcasts. And I mean, I always I love talking to people, yeah. um, doing so many different events, um, getting out there, talking about the book all the time. Of course, creating the workbook was a great companion mm-hmm. to really then bring forward the the consulting and leadership coaching practices that I have in, as in sort of uniting that, uh, creating an online, uh, you know, a, yeah. a group learning program that I now offer to um, to companies as well, but it's it's a ton of effort, and you have to be out there. You have to be on social media yeah. talking about the book, and you know, I think it's helpful to just know that it's not about necessarily selling. That to me, selling the book isn't the uh, isn't the end goal. It's about I really genuinely believe that the stories inside the book help people, and so I can talk about that from a genuine uh, yes. a genuine space. You know, I, I I couldn't believe it though. One of the most amazing things that happened to me this year was that I found out that Larry Culp, the CEO of General Electric, had yeah. heard me on a podcast, actually an internal podcast um, at GE, and you can listen to it on my on my website called I'll link to on it that here. note. Yeah, I'll link to it. Yeah, link, thank you. And um, he heard me speak on it and was like, oh, that was some, Katie said some really insightful things. I, please, I want to, he asked his assistant to put his, the book in his like summer holiday bag. He came back and sent a message to all GE employees around the world saying, <laughs> read this book. You know, I mean, those are the types, you know, you can't, yeah. you can't pay for that. That was an amazing. And then I had a chance to speak with him on stage at a conference. So I'm sharing this yeah. because that is the output of like years of of getting the word out and talking about it and the effort. And then it continues to grow and build. And so the number one recommendation I have for authors is that you have to put in as much or more effort to marketing the book and spreading the word about the book than you put into writing the book, if Mm -hmm. you want to get it into the hands of that many people. Yeah, you're so right. And well, and as you were sharing that, which by the way, is so cool, Katie, like I was so excited to hear about that opportunity for you. It's proof that nothing happens instantaneously for anybody Mm. that you have to work for it. Yeah, the book has been out. It it was published. It was released in July of 2020. We're recording this in December Mm -hmm. of 2022. So this is it's the long, it's the long game. Yeah. And then working with you to help set up the launch for success and getting that team and then continuing to build that plan has been just invaluable. So authors, if you're listening, go talk to Stephanie. She will help you get on the pathway of how you can best show up to get the book into um, others people's hands and be aware of why they need it. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Katie. And I'm going to riff off of something in your business. I hope you don't mind. Katie and I have a lot of fun. We work on lots of different projects yeah. and some of them are um, kind of behind the scenes. Some are in front of the camera and everything in between. But one thing that Katie's been doing this past year is articulating the seven C's, which mm. is a part of her kind of 
how she helps people. And we can go into that in a minute, but I'm going to riff because I have three C's that I'm going to talk about based on what you just said. Okay. All right. (laughs) When I think about the impact you've had, and again, looking at you and seeing how other people could benefit from it, these are the three things that I've identified that I think would be successful. The first one is a collaboration. So Mm -hmm. I have found on my end, I'm going to pivot for a minute and talk about what it's like to work with great authors like you. Mm. The most successful authors that I get the chance to help are the ones that see marketing not as a one-off, oh, I'm just going to have somebody else to do this. It's a collaborative journey that they are a part of the process. And you've always been that. You know your story best. You, it's at your heart. You believe mm. in your book and your message. But together, you know, what is it? One plus one, Katie, equals way more than two. That's right. <laughs> it does. And so when when you collaborate, with others, whether it's in your marketing efforts, strategic partnerships, or anywhere in between, collaboration, I think, is a big key. I mean, would you agree that that's been a success point for you? Oh, absolutely. And I'm, I've, collaboration has been, it's yeah. not one of my seven C's, but it is definitely inherent in that. So like yeah. the connection, it's that when we work yes. together, we achieve so much yes. more. Yeah. Um, yep. And there's some things you can outsource for sure, but mm-hmm. it's it's the partnership you yeah. achieve so like in figuring out who, what roles people play and how you can yeah. build on ideas. And I, one of the things I love working with you, Stephanie, is like we just ideate so much together and build <laughs> on and create so much more than uh, I would have just if I was thinking about things on my own. My favorites are when I'm like, oh, snap. And like last time, last week when I sent you something, I can't wait. I have to show you this thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. Gets really excited. But it's just proof that um, my dad mm. recently shared with, and this is how books work, but he, I think it's great in our partnership and other great collaborations that when an author writes a bro- book, they're one person. When the reader comes to read the book, they're one person. But when they come together, a third person's created, right? And this is where this growth really happens. And I think that's what happens where mm. collaborations at. Now, my second C, you just said, and that's connection. And I think, mm. look, I'm just making these up, Katie, my C's. My oh, three yeah, C's well, there's so many your C words. So many great C words. But connection, I think, is another very valid tool in what I've been able to observe as you having the biggest impact. Connection meaning you see the one, you speak to the one, you connect with the heart, you see like... It's not just go buy my book. It's listen, I have a message mm. and the message, you don't even ever, ever say that. The message will change, but you don't have to. You don't have to talk about buying books when you focus on connection. And the yes. connection I, is the and I, I agree. Absolutely. I mean, this gets back to a comment I made earlier is I've always had a hard time if I'm just selling to sell something. But if I yeah. genuinely believe it and feel yeah. it here, I, if I can speak from that, and then it, that that's what it's about. And and yeah. what's wonderful is I hear other people saying the same thing. I mean, I just had a session with a client of mine. They've taught to talk with Mr. Yoshino. Uh, and they were talking about the connection that they felt and the impact the book had for them. And that was just, yeah, that's that, awesome. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. I mean, we right. write books to help people do something, you know? Right. And so, yeah. So yeah, talk about I love that. I love that. And I think, I think the chain of learning, which is something you so so much talk about and believe in, is this, um, really, it's all about being impactful with the EM. It's that when you connect with people, a part Mm. of you is left with them. And that changes them and makes them Mm. stronger. And then a part of them is left. And this is where the chain happens of good change and and change in chains and all that loveliness. Okay. My third C that I've noticed with you is consistency. And you mentioned it before, show Mm -hmm. up people, you have to show up. You can't stop. You can adjust, but never from the, from the moment this book came out, Katie, we have been consistent in spreading a message, evolving the message and showing up. Yeah. Yes. I would add like (laughs) relentless consistency (laughs) and that can be exhausting. It doesn't mean you can't take some, a break, you know, I take intentional pauses from social media and other things, but again, like it, it's being it, it is being consistent. It's kind it's constantly being out there and talking about not just the book, but the messages connecting with yeah. people um, and highlighting ways that it can um, benefit for you. And so yeah. uh, benefit you. Yeah. So I love those collaboration, <laughs> connection, and consistency. These are going to be the empowered author three I C's. <laughs> three C's. Uh, yeah. But when you were chatting, it just came to my mind. I thought, well, if I, if I were to whittle down for somebody who's just listening, mm. what I really think your differentiator is, I mean, there's a lot outside of your message, but what has been, and I think that's part of it. You know, you've really focused on being intentional, which is obviously at the heart of the type of leader and the leadership you teach, but you've done it in a way that you've shown up, that you 
you've connected with people, you've built relationships along the way, you didn't stop and you found help when you needed it, right? Nobody can do anything alone or you could, it wouldn't be quite as fun. Totally. And, you know, we talked about the concept of intention and, and I, I see intention equals heart plus direction. This comes from the, the way the word intention is written in Japanese, but it gets back to this purpose. Like what's in our heart? What's the impact we want to have? And then what are the actions we need to take to align in that direction? So if we take like that intention for you as an author, what's the impact you want to have on other people? How do you want to show up? And then what are the actions you need to take to really do that? Because it's one thing to set an intention to be like, oh, I want to you know, have a really successful book and impact a lot of people. All right. So what do you need to do to actually in, in achieve that and to be that person who is having the impact? So- Yes. Um, yeah. And how Thank will you, you know that you did it? That's, you know, you, you don't know you're going to get there unless you outline it. That's what I love about the Daruma because inevitably when mm. you color in one eye, now you know what you need to do to get it complete. I think Darumas are so cool and I love how you have different ones for different reasons and it's just amazing. Yes. Well, I'm so excited to go back to Japan. I'm actually putting, placing a large order of mini Darumas because I give them out to all of my clients, people I meet at events, uh, to have a, a visual reminder of me and uh, you know a goal that they have as yeah. well. But I'm um, through the pandemic. I haven't been to Japan in almost three years, and so I'm I, I'm down to like thirty mini Daruma. So I just placed not a, enough. A large Katie, order. You need more. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love so, it. Well, I had all these in person events, which was you know again. A lot of it was because of my book. Of course, the book got translated into many languages. So I, you know, I was in Poland, Portugal, the Netherlands, you know, all these places because celebrating the book. And again, that was my my goal with the book was to reach a global audience because Mr. Yeah. Yoshino is so global, and yeah. all of, uh, and so am I. How you define impact can be different. And so it's Absolutely. you know, don't compare yourself against like me, or don't compare yourself against right. other authors. But what is the impact you want to have for your book? And then go go out and 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 achieve that. That's why you wrote do the it. book, right? So. Yes. People will read it. Do it. <laughs> yes, because I always say a book that isn't read makes Stephanie cry. And nobody wants to make Stephanie yeah. cry. <laughs> like, you no. know, you don't want you don't want a book collecting dust. You want it to have the spine broken and the pages folded. You want them to need to get a second one because they've read it so many times that it's worn. Like you want it used. You didn't write a book for your legacy to sit on a shelf. You wrote a book because you have something that the world can be changed from. And, you know, as someone who has read your story and your book, I mean, Mr. Yoshino's story is beautifully interwoven, but so is yours, Katie. And I think, honestly, even though your book is written for leaders, I think anybody anywhere could benefit from it. And I would highly encourage them to read it. Well, thank you, Stephanie. And that was actually really important to me in how I wrote the book. I didn't want to write a super technical book that was really only going to appeal to people who are either in a leadership role or are in a continuous improvement lean mm -hmm. um, practitioner role. But really, they're human stories about becoming a better person and having an impact on other people. And so I wrote it from that frame to be accessible to everyone, but still meet the the yeah. you know, interests of people who are, you know, more experienced and, and others. So thank you so much for, yeah. Um, yeah, for that, for those insights and continuing to help me expand the impact of this book for people who, as you always say, don't know that they need it. <laughs> they don't know they need it yet, but they will. And that's why we tell them about it. And yeah. Katie, it's an honor to have been on the journey with you. You have taught me so much about leading and learning and learning to lead and leading to <laughs> learn and all of that stuff. But you know, you're in the business of making an impact and so am I. And I'm just so grateful to be able to support you in that process. So thank you. And thank you for sharing your story with us today. Thank you, Stephanie. And really one plus one equals much more than two. So <laughs> that's how we create our impact. Absolutely. There was a time in life that I wanted to be a math teacher. Don't laugh, <laughs> but I laugh at it now because this girl over here needs a calculator on the regular. However, the type of math that Katie always speaks about is something I can do. I could do that because one plus one equals way more than two. <laughs> when two people come together, something magical happens, growth occurs, and that's where lives are changed. It's where the chain of learning begins and it's where it continues. It's also where success is built. Katie continues to have amazing book success and I believe it's because 
because she's open to what I call the three C's, collaboration, a commitment to connection, and very, very, very consistent efforts. I've loved working with Katie and I'd love to work with you too. If I can help you make an impact, come on, let's chat. That'd be fun. And you may really enjoy reading my new book, Make Your Author Impact, Sell More Books, Increase Your Reach, and Achieve Your Why. I am truly humbled to get the opportunity to help authors and I'm honored to support them. Impact, however, is a two-way street. It's a pay it forward kind of amazing. So if you like the book or any book from any author, share it, people, share it, friends, share it with another person. And if you like Make Your Author Impact, share it with another author because it may be the empowerment tool that they need to help them make their impact too. All right, author friend, thank you for listening today and for saying yes to becoming empowered and for making your author impact. As you know, I'm a believer that empowered people empower people. I have empowered you and now it is your turn to empower others.